It's interesting. Somebody told me recently that uh, I, I, I put a death threat on them because I told them that if they do not obey the word of God, they're hastening their own death. They, they accuse me of a, a death threat, you know. It's really funny. I just tell them the truth from God's word. That's not because I hate, out of hatred. Those that preach the word of God faithfully do it because out of love. Even as God loves his children and disciplines them and gives them warning that they might turn from their wicked way and might live forever. That's the purpose. But there are some that are so wicked that they will not listen to the warning. And they have to experience the zeal of God's wrath because they are disobedient children. Now it says uh, in Ezekiel, um, third chapter, verse 16, It came to pass the end of seven days that the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, and from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul, this is the commandment of God that we are to warn the wicked. And some are so unbelievably wicked. They make up lies. And they know they're lying. Their whole game is lying. They're just like the media full of a bag of tricks. Always hiding the truth. Just like the government that puts poison in our food, chemicals that cause cancer and things. And yet, they declare themselves to be the most holy and pure and righteous things. And that's what you are, Dallas. Dressing up with your little hair and stuff. I tell you, they're getting worse and worse these days. We know who you are. We know exactly where you are. And God knows where to, where to find you, believe me. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I say, and I lay a stumbling block before him, and he and he shall die. But because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. You see, the righteous man, he lives when he's warned, he pays attention. See, this is the whole difference between the sheep and the goats, the wicked and the righteous, Dallas. You were warned, and yet you throw it into God's face as if uh, God was a, 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 a somebody that you can spit on. That's what makes your sin more evil. And that's why you will receive the punishment of God. Because you do not repent at His Word and at righteousness. But you continue on in your foolishness and your wickedness. Now in uh, Ezekiel chapter 5, um, speaking about Israel, they were not listening to God's warning, you see. And um, verse 11, it says, Wherefore, as I live, saith Jehovah God, because thou hast defiled my sanctuary. That's what God is really angry about. When you come into his sanctuary, 
in phoniness and with deception and lies and defile it. With all thy detestable things, he knows. And with all thy abominations, therefore will also I diminish thee, neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. People think, well, God's just talking. He doesn't really follow through with his warnings. Oh, when the righteous repents, he does not follow through with it. He repents himself of the, of the anger he has. When the righteous sees the error of his way, and he turns back from it, and repents, and stays in God's mercy. God loves him still. But these wicked, that no matter what you do, no matter how much you preach to them, and reprove them, they still rile up against you and against God. Then God has one place for them. A third, uh, it says, In mine eyes shall not spare, neither shall I have any pity. A third part of them shall die with a pestilence, and with famine they shall be consumed in the midst of the land of thee. The third part shall fall by the sword round about thee, and I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. The whole nation was wicked. Then shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted. And they shall know that Jehovah hath spoken it, in my zeal, when I have accomplished my fury in them. God doesn't speak empty words of vanity. He speaks for a reason. And this is personally to you, Dallas, who started making lies and false accusations against me. Your foolishness is way beyond reproof now. You've been warned plenty. And now there's no more warning for you. But it is a fearful anticipation of judgment. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Believe me, punk. Uh, forget about that. Listen to what God says. My words, I mean. Yeah. But I have the Spirit of God. And I'm with God. And I, and I hate, I detest people that think they can tread upon the word of God. To me they are punks. But enough warning. They're, de they're dead. They're dead walking dead. And God will accomplish his fury in them. And then he will be comforted when they receive his judgment. Moreover, I will make thee waste and reproach among the nations that I have round about thee in the sight of all passed by. Okay. Yeah. So that that's what happened to ancient Israel. The whole the God's chosen ones, you know. They thought they were so chosen that hey, they could do anything, man. They could even sin against God. Because they, they, they were chosen already. You know? But guess what? They weren't chosen because they were a bunch of fools. God rejected them as a nation. So he has a new nation now with the law of God written in their hearts. And they are the Israelites indeed. You know, the ones that Jesus' brothers are a part of. We're all part of that congregation. The great, great congregation in which our, our chief, our master, our chief brother is Jesus Christ. We are his. We are his people, and we will follow him. We love him more than anything, more than mother, father, brother, sister, anything in this world. We don't stop for nothing, and we'll continue to speak the truth. And you that are too weak to hear it, you will pass to the wayside, unfortunately. You must 
not be ashamed of the Son of God. You must value the pearl of great value above all else. To become one of His. To be worthy of Him. Those are His words. There is no salvation in any other name under heaven. Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life forever.